What's up Node.js developers? In this video, we're gonna set up your macOS system to be ready for Expo CLI and to start working and start building your first React Native application with Expo. In today's video, we're gonna work with a MacBook Pro M1 Pro chip, but these steps are gonna apply both for M1 chips and for Intel chips for macOS. We will cover the installation process and setting up all the necessary tools in order to start working with Expo CLI. Uh, and in this video, we're not going to speak about React Native CLI and we're not going to set up Xcode and Android Studio. If you're interested in that, check out the other video on the channel where we set up the React Native CLI. And without further ado, let's jump into installing everything. The first thing that I'd like to do on any new macOS system is to install iTerm2 uh, because it comes with a lot of improvements in comparison with the terminal that comes by default with macOS. So let's go to iTerm2.com and download the, um, yeah, the zip from here. Let's open the iTerm and let's move to the application folder when it asks. So the pip3 command requires the command line developer tools. Let's select cancel here and check automatically. And now we should be good to go. If I close everything, here is the item two. And we're gonna use this item two throughout the rest of this tutorial. All right, so uh, the next step is to install Homebrew, which is a package manager for macOS. And uh, let's go to Homebrew website and grab the installation command from there. Here we see the first things is the installation command. So let's copy it from here and let's go back to our item and paste in our command. Press enter. Latest version of uh, Homebrew supports M1 Pro chips. And um, yeah, that's, that's great because we don't have to work with Rosetta or anything or other hacks. Okay, and once uh, Homebrew finished installing, that's not it. We need to uh, run these two commands in our terminal in order to add Homebrew to our path. So let's copy them separately like this. Command C, Command V. And the second one here like this, Command C. So now if I write brew dash dash version, I see homebrew 3.3.2. And let's also try to close our terminal and open it again and make sure that homebrew is there. So brew version again, I see it 3.3.2, uh, which means that it has added to the path and now we have access to the brew command. What's also good about brew is that while we installed it, it automatically installed for us git. So if I write git dash dash version, I see the git version uh, 2.30.1, which is good. However, if you don't have it installed, you can run brew install git and this will automatically install git on your system. Let's run it again because it might uh, bring some updates. All right, so if I run again git version, I see the same version, which is good. Now with the help of Brew, we can install some of prerequisites, some of the dependencies that we need uh, before getting into Expo CLI. The first one is Node. Node is the JavaScript environment which will help us run our Expo and React Native applications. And also it comes with the NPM, which is a Node Package Manager that will help us install other tools and dependencies inside our projects. So uh, let's clear our screen here and start with installing brew install node. All right, so after finishing uh, installation, let's do clear and let's uh, check the node version. 17, that's good. And let's do NPM version as well. 8.1, perfect, let's move on. The next tool that we will install is called Watchman. And this is a tool developed by Facebook that will uh, automatically rerun your project 
whenever uh, you have some changes in your files. So this is uh, a great way to speed up your development and you don't have to restart the server anytime you do some changes. So let's do homebrew, not homebrew, just brew. Brew install watchman. Okay, and it finished installing everything. Now we can do clear. Now that we have all the prerequisite installed and set up on our system, let's go ahead and install Expo CLI and give it a go. For that, I'm gonna use npm package manager to install uh, Expo CLI, and we're gonna do that, npm install, we're gonna do that globally. So let's do dash dash global. Uh, in order to be able to access Expo CLI from anywhere on our machine, and now the package name Expo CLI. Okay, so Expo CLI is installed. Now is the moment of truth. Let's try to initialize a new, our first Expo project. But before that, let's make sure that everything is installed by running Expo, who am I or who I am? And here we see a warning that Expo CLI has not been tested on uh, Node.js version 17, because when we installed Node.js, uh, Node.js uh, Node installed the latest version. And yeah, if you are having any issues, uh, try downgrading Node.js to the LTS version, the long-term support, which now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is the version 16. But I think that it, everything should be uh, the same and should be good to go. So uh, it shows us that we are not currently logged in. So we need to run Expo login if you have an account or Expo register um, command if you don't have an account yet. And this will open the expo.dev sign up. Create an account for free here and then go back to your terminal. You need that account in order to be able to run it on your device. And then go back here and do Expo login. Okay, and uh, now we also have to provide that two-factor authenticator code. And we are logged in. And if I do uh, again the expo who am I, I see that I'm logged in as Vadim Savin. Perfect. Now let's continue to set up our first React Native project with Expo. To do that, I'm gonna do Expo init, or let's first of all clear everything. And let's do expo init and the project name, my first project. Uh, it asks us to choose a template. So for the sake of this tutorial, let's choose the blank one, the first one, and wait a couple of uh, minutes until it installs all the JavaScript dependencies. All right, and it seems that our uh, project has been initialized. Now let's try to run it and see it in action. So let's do cd my first project to go inside this directory. And now let's do npm start to start the development server. This should automatically open a Windows browser. I don't know why in my case it didn't. Um, let's give it another try, npm start. And yeah, here I see the development, uh, the development server, the development browser for Expo. And from here I can run it on iOS simulator, I can run it in browser, Android device, and so on. Uh, so far we have not installed Android and iOS simulators. And uh, this is out of the scope of this video. We're gonna cover that whenever we will install in the next video React Native CLI. But now the, uh, a good option that we have uh, without uh, installing the simulators and emulators on our machine is to go ahead and install Expo Go on our mobile phone. So if you go to the App Store or the Google Play, search for the Expo Go uh, application, Expo go and go ahead and install uh, this application. After you install it, you can open 
And recently in development, uh, after you log in in this application with the same account as on your machine, uh, you should see recently in development your the name of your project that is running uh, on your machine. So let's try to open it. And after a couple of seconds uh, to download everything, we should see our first React Native application. Back in our development tools, we see here uh, building JavaScript, which took only six seconds, quite fast. And on the mobile phone, I see downloading. All right, so here we have it. Open up app.js to start working on your application. Everything has run successfully and we have our application running on our device directly. The last step that I want to uh, show how to do is how to install the IDE where we will be able to uh, work and to update our application. My idea of choice is Visual Studio Code. You can go ahead and install any other IDEs that you prefer. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna show you how to install Visual Studio Code. So let's go to the code.visualstudio.com and here download Mac Universal Build. After it had finished installing, let's open the zip. And before opening, let's move Visual Studio Code to the applications. So let's grab it like this. I guess that's how you do it. And do Visual Studio Code to open it here. So now that we have Visual Studio Code, we can open our project uh, that we have initialized in an, the previous tab. And let's do open. My first project from the list, let's open. And let's say trust the offers. All right, here, first of all, I'm gonna stop the server that uh, I have opened in the terminal. Uh, I don't need the terminal anymore here. To open a terminal in VS Code, let's go on the top bar and here there is terminal, new terminal. And from here we can do the same command npm start in order to start our development server. Let's press OK. And here is the same development tools, but now we're running it from VS Code. And what we can do is go to the app.js and let's try to update the text here. So, so if I do hello world here, I will see immediately uh, the application updating on my device. If you're interested in how to set up Visual Studio Code Farfer in order to uh, speed up your development with React Native, check out the video on my channel with the top 10 Visual Studio Code extensions that I'm using every day. All right, and now uh, our whole setup, our whole environment is ready to be able to work and write React Native application using Expo. That was it for today, guys. Now your macOS system is ready for you to start building your next mobile applications with React Native. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button down below and let me know in the comments what other tutorials would you like me to cover related to React Native. Check out this video if you want to set up your React Native CLI environment on your macOS because that video includes also how to set up your uh, Android emulator, how to set up Xcode that which will also bring the iOS emulator and other tools for React Native CLI.